welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. What a delight it is to be with you today. And again, I say thank you for allowing me to be part of your day. You have made it to Friday, and for most people, this is the last day of their work week. And I so know some people, they work through uh, on Friday, and they will have to work on Saturday as well. But for many people, Friday is the last of the work week. You've made it thus far, and congratulations. Let's begin to set our hearts and minds on worshiping God corporately, that is, in your local church this coming Lord's Day. Right now, if you can, reach over and get your Bible and join me in uh, the Gospel of Mark and chapter 16. The Gospel of Mark and chapter 16. I begin with this question. Why did Jesus arise from the dead? Why did Jesus, why was he resurrected from the dead? Now, if you are born again, then you do believe that Jesus both died and was bodily raised from the dead. You say amen to those kind of statements when your pastor preaches them from the pulpit of your church. But can you give ready answers to the question, why did Jesus arise from the dead? Now, today I do want you to get something to write with and write on because I'm going to end this broadcast by listing five reasons Jesus arose. I have about, oh, seven or eight, ten more reasons that I won't have time to get to, but I want to give you at least these five. You should write them down and probably write them somewhere in the flyleaf or the back pages of your Bible to keep them handy. Why did Jesus arise from the dead? Along the way, I'll be encouraging you to get involved in making this a two-way communication by text messaging me. And uh, once we get done here with chapter 16 of Mark, I'll begin to answer some questions that have been asked via text messaging. A number of you have uh, communicated questions to us. I want to confront them with the Word of God after we get done with chapter 16 in our study here in the Gospel of Mark. But if you'd like to text message me and give me your input on the broadcast and tell me what you think about it today. At the end, I'm going to give you a text messaging number, but I'm going to give it now as well. And why don't you jot it down? Text me the word gospel, G-O-S-P-E-L, to this number, area code 708-515-4086. Again, text the word gospel to area code 708 708- 515-4086. When you do that, I'll begin to ask you some very simple questions that require minimal uh, input by you, but it'd be a great help to us. I also want you to get a sample packet of our gospel tracks. One of them is in my hand right now. This one's entitled Infant Baptism? Question mark. Infant Baptism? That's the question at the top of the track face. At the bottom of the track face, here's what it says. What does the Bible say? Oh, friends, so many people are confused. They're so quick to get their babies baptized, and then they think that their babies are set for heaven because they were baptized as an infant. What does the Bible say? When you open this track up, it's a very short track. (laughs) It has one word answer. The word is nothing. On the back is a very quick, simple presentation of what baptism is supposed to be about, and then it answers the question, who should get baptized? And you know who should get baptized? People who have personally put their faith in Christ. They get baptized after their salvation. Here's a great gospel track. I want to send it to you. Would you let me? At the end of my broadcast, when I get all done, my announcer is going to come back on and give you about three ways by which you can communicate to with me. Give me your name, give me your address, and we will send you free of charge uh, a uh, sample packet of all of our English gospel tracks. All right. 
Come with me now, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16. I begin reading at verse 4. Here's what it says. And when they, that is the women, looked, they saw that the stone, the stone to the sepulcher, was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold, look, behold the place where they laid him. Starting on the Wednesday broadcast of this week, I began to focus on that stone that was rolled away from the door of Jesus' tomb. What you're hearing in three pieces and three parts was, in essence, my my Easter, I almost said Christmas, my Easter message this year. I actually had the privilege of being a pastor again for one Sunday. There's a church about an hour south of our office here that presently is without a pastor. And they asked me to come on Easter Sunday. I I preached there a number of times. But they've asked me to come on Easter Sunday. And I got to speak on both the morning and evening uh, service there. And I preached the message that I have uh, in three parts here. I actually, by the way, got got to lead them in a communion service. I had a great, great day. What a special privilege it was for me. I hope that they were felt the privilege to have uh, me there and their stand-in pastor, so to speak, for that day. But what I preached on the Easter Sunday morning in one sermon, I'm giving you in three parts here. My three-point outline that Sunday was this. Jesus' enemies wanted the stone anchored in place. That was my Wednesday broadcast here. The, po- the p- women that came to the tomb, very polite ladies, these followers of Jesus, they wanted the stone just a jar, just enough to make the them allow them to get in and make the dead bodies smell better. That was yesterday's broadcast. Today, I want us to see that God Almighty, he wants that stone not anchored or not a jar. He wants it away, totally away. God wants all to see the emptiness of that tomb. Now, listen, my friend. God can do what, what no one else dares to touch. Caesar's seal was on that tombstone. Uh, to mess with that seal meant death. Uh, to, you, you just don't defy Caesar. But really, do you think Jesus was afraid of Caesar? What was the Roman government going to do to Jesus? Kill him? <laughs> how, how do you kill somebody that has just broken death? There were these professional soldiers guarding the tomb. I'm sure they were burly and battle-tested men, men to be feared by, by others. But Jesus, he was not intimidated by these men and their weapons for Pete's sake. It was a Roman spear that has pierced his side already. It was Roman nails that had pierced his hands and feet, holding him to the cross. That had already been done. Could these weapons of flesh and blood, could they hold him? No, of course they couldn't. Our God and Savior rolled back the stone of that sepulcher. Matthew chapter 28 says that God had an angel sit on the stone once it was out of the way, sat there as if to say, the job is done. God left the grave clothes there in the tomb to be examined by anyone and all who really wanted to know the truth about God that stone being rolled away. God wanted that stone totally away from the tomb so that all could see and all would see that Jesus, who had died once, was now alive to live forevermore. But I come back to the question I began with here today. Why? Why the resurrection? Why is it so important to to you and I? Why is it important to God? Let me give you five reasons. There are many, many more, but let me give you five. And I don't even think that I'm not ready to say these are the most important five, but I think these are important. Reason number one, why the resurrection is important to God is this. The resurrection was the seal of God the Father to say that he was satisfied with Jesus's life and Jesus's propitiatory work, his atoning work, his death on Calvary satisfied the sin debt 
It satisfied the anger of God. You see, sin left us condemned. God condemned sin and sinners, but Jesus, by taking our place on Calvary, condemned sin in the flesh, Romans chapter 8 says. Acts chapter 2, verses 22 to 24, they say this, Peter preaching, ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it." Why is the resurrection important? Because it is the seal of God the Father that he is satisfied with Jesus' perfect life and his substitutionary atonement that he did on Calvary's cross. A second reason why the resurrection is important is this. The resurrection is the mark or the proof of Jesus' divinity and his, and his messiahship. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of references here. One I'm going to read. The first reference I'm not going to read is Romans 1, 4. Romans 1, 4. But then a second reference, Acts 2, 36. That one I'm here. Acts 2, verse 36 says this. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ, both Lord, divine name, and Messiah. You see, so reason number two, the resurrection is the mark of the proof of Jesus' divinity and his messiahship. Number three, the resurrection allowed Jesus' human body to be changed so that it can have an eternal existence. His physical body can now have an eternal existence. Acts 2, oh, beginning in verse 31 and on through some verses there. The body of Jesus is now a glorified body, the kind of body you and I will have that we will have in all eternity who know him. Number four, the resurrection gives to you and to me assurance that our sin debt was paid and the payment was accepted by God. Let me give you a text here. We haven't got time to read it, but 1 Corinthians 15, verse 14 and verse 17. You and I can know our sin debt is paid. We don't have to worry and wring our hands and wonder about it. Reason number five, the resurrection releases new power for living life to all who believe so they can serve the true and living God. The Gospel of John chapter 14 and verse 19 and Romans chapter 6 and verse 4 says that we are raised to walk in a new life. Friend, do you know Christ as Savior? Oh, How do you respond to the broadcast today? Would you text message me? Text me the word gospel. Let me give you that number one more time. Text me the word gospel to area code 708-515-4086. Tell me what you think about the broadcast. Rate it. All right? Here's the number again. 708-515-4086. Dear soul winner friend, Don't worry and wonder about your sin debt being dealt with. If you've received Christ as Savior, Christ's resurrection is proof positive and assurance to you and to me that God has accepted the payment and we are clean and clear. Our our sin debt is clean and clear before God the Father. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.